Years ago, I was a pastor of a small little church of 115 people in Southern California, and we had this amazing young single woman uh, coming to our church, and she came in and met with some of us after the service and said, I have a stalker, and, and he is peeking in windows of my apartment at night. I'm afraid. My roommates are afraid. I'll show up at work again. I see his car all the time. And, and, she, and she said, I don't think this is a church thing, but she said, the, the, she said, I just, would you guys pray for me? And we went, wait a second. If she's in our church, okay, the church is the family of God, which means she's my sister in Christ. Okay? The church is the family of God. If this were happening to your sister or your wife or your daughter, okay, what would you do? She said, I know this isn't a church thing. I said, this is a church thing. And so we took all the men in the church, met with them all, put them in twos, and all, for about a month, all these men spent, they, they went in twos and they spent the night in front of her apartment in the front seat of a car and watched over her to keep her safe all night long. And finally, about day 28 or 29, this guy shows up and he's peeking in a window. These guys rush out, they grab this guy, they put him on the ground, they call the police and the police call and they haul this guy off and he has never been seen again. Okay. I mean, she had no trouble. It's years later, no trouble ever with this guy again. That's the church being the church. The church is a family of God. And it should have some major impacts on your life. You heard four of them this weekend. The fifth one, which is kind of overtime on this message, the church of Jesus Christ should strengthen my faith. There's the church should strengthen my faith. Now, how does that happen? Okay. It happens in worship. Your emotions are strengthened. You come out stronger. It happens when you hear the teaching of God's word, your base of truth and the promises of God strengthen you and you come out stronger and you end up becoming a disciple. Those combinations of spirit and truth are an incredible combination get unleashed in your life. However, there's something that's missing today after a year and a half of everybody being stuck in their living room. Hebrews 10.25 says this about strengthening your faith. Here it is, Hebrews 10.25. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. And we've created that habit in the last 18 months. He says, but encourage one another. He says, but encourage one another. Encourage. Where do I find courage? Encourage in relationship. But encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. And I just want to talk. It's going to be a shorter one, but here we go. All I want to do is say this. You and I need to be connected to a church. We need to be connected to people, okay? The Lone Ranger thing does not work. And let me tell you why and how the church strengthens your faith, okay? Um, all of us, all of us, your emotional health, your relational health, your psychological well-being is two things in balance of all time. And if they get out of whack, you're in serious trouble, okay? And here they are. There's challenge and support. This challenge and support. And when my challenge level rises and my support level doesn't rise, the distance between those two things are destructive stress. Okay, So I'm going to say it again. When my challenge level rises, and whose challenge level hasn't risen this year? COVID, government, social media, every, has just blown everybody's challenges to the roof. And most people, because they were isolated, their support dropped. And the distance between my challenge and my support, yeah, I'm preaching now to you all, get this, the distance between my challenge and my support is destructive stress. And destructive stress it can wreck your health, it can wreck your marriage. A lot of a lot of guys having affairs is inappropriate stress relief. Al almost all alcoholism, inappropriate stress relief, drug abuse, inappropriate stress relief. In other words, when my challenges exceed my level of support, okay, then I get destructive stress and it wrecks the rest of my life. And please hear this: God wants you supported. 
God wants you encouraged. God himself will draw near to you. But the Bible says this, you also get that as we encourage each other. When we gather on weekends in a service, it's encouraging because you are reminded of the presence of God and the power of God. You get out the Bible and you're reminded of the promises of God. And all of a sudden, your support level, same thing happened to me this year. I mean, I'm getting criticized on all sides. Is anybody leading anything? It's been a crazy year. At some point, I just decided, you know what? I'm going to raise my level of support. I invested in more friendships. I created more meetings. I got guys together far more often. And I pretty much just went, I am going to, I cannot lower a lot of your challenges, unfortunately, but you can raise your level of support. That verse is great. Here's maybe the, uh, I'll close with this. Hebrews 10, 25, read that verse, memorize that verse. It's American Christian's number one need right now is to obey what the Bible says in that exact verse, okay? So get that down. Here's really what I want to say is this, okay? Your faith being strengthened and alive, it's like a log in a fireplace. You have five logs in a fireplace, you're one of them, okay? And when they're all together, then everything burns brightly. If you take one log out of that fireplace and set it aside, what happens to that log? That log, the fire dies out and it becomes cold and hard. That is what's happened to millions and millions and millions of Christians, thousands of people in this area. They have gotten pulled out of the warmth of fellowship and their hearts have gotten hard and their life's gotten hard and their faith has gotten cold. So if you're that log, if you're listening to this and you're going, I'm that log, I'm no longer in a small group, I'm no longer in a men's or women's Bible study, I am no longer in uh, in church, and there's, what do you do? All you gotta do to reignite that log is this. Take that log, put it back in the fire. I promise you, it will reignite. The same thing's true with you. Don't get stuck out in the cold. Get back in the fire. God bless you. We'll see you this weekend.